In section 4.5, we are going to be learning how to solve both exponential equations and logarithmic equations. So exponential functions and logarithmic functions are quite common in calculus. So before we jump into learning how to solve these types of equations, we're going to do a quick review of exponential and logarithmic functions. We're going to start with a review of exponential functions. So it says an exponential function is a function that has a variable in an exponent. Okay, mathematically, if a is bigger than zero, but a can't be one, then the exponential function with base a is given by f of x is equal to a raised to the x power. Okay, so exponential functions are going to be very common in calculus. You have to know how to recognize them, okay, um, because they have certain properties that you're going to want to be aware of. So again, the key to recognizing an exponential function is that it has a variable in the exponent or power. Okay, so just to jot down some examples, I'm just going to randomly make this up. You might have f of x is equal to 2 to the x. Okay, this is a very simple exponential function. Um, your variable here is x. It's located in the power or exponent. Okay, the quantity that's being raised to the power, okay, that's called the base. Okay, so this is a base 2 exponential function okay exponential functions can get really complicated so let me give you another one this time the variable I'll use t okay so uh, let me see let me think of one uh, let's see let's do 688 minus 31.5 times e to the point zero one zero three three t plus e to the negative point zero one zero three three t okay so that one's definitely a lot more complicated t is the variable and t is located in the exponent okay here um, the quantity that's being raised to the power is e okay the base here is the number e which we'll talk about in just a second e is a number in addition to being a letter, E is a number. Um, so again, you recognize exponential functions because the variable is located in the exponent or power. And the number that's being raised to the power is called the base of the exponential function. Okay. When we solve exponential equations, you're going to have to use the laws of exponents. So these are some things that you should have learned from an algebra class, but let's do a review of them. So in the box that's entitled laws of exponents, uh, it says if S, T, A, and B are real numbers with A being bigger than zero and B being bigger than zero, then the following properties hold. Okay, so this first property right here talks about what happens if we raise one to a power. So we're raising one to the s power. Okay, but s can pretty much be anything. Okay, well, we know one to the first power is one. One squared is one times one, which is one. Okay, one cubed is one times one times one, which is one. Okay, and so on. Okay, um, basically, anything you raise one to you're going to get one okay so one to any power is indeed one okay even if you were to raise one to a negative power okay let's talk about negative powers that's the second property okay if i have a number a and raise it to the negative s power how do you deal with that okay it is difficult to process negative exponents. Our minds just don't go there, okay? Um, we are used to positive exponents, okay? So that's why if we have a negative exponent, we usually eliminate it, okay? So let me give you an example of this. Um, let's go up here. I'll write some example, just a, a simple one to give you that, uh, just so you can remember how to process these guys. If I have two 
to the negative one power. Okay, again, how do we think of that? Okay, well, you can eliminate a negative exponent in this manner. You're going to do one over the entire quantity, but then you're going to come back and change the sign of the exponent. So the negative exponent would become positive. So this is going to become one half or 0.5. Okay, so that's how you get rid of a negative exponent. It's a lot easier to think about one half or 0.5 than to process two to the negative one. Okay, so this is a good property to remember to if you have, um, you know, if you're doing these exponential equations and you encounter a negative exponent, you can eliminate it. So you're going to do one over the entire quantity, but then you're going to change the sign of the exponent. Okay, so it's going to be a to the negative s power is the same thing as 1 over a to the positive s power. Okay, all right, the next property, if you take something and raise it to the zero power, by definition, that is 1. I don't care how complicated the quantity is that you're raising to the zero power. Okay, it's 1. Anything to the zero power is one okay remember that okay next if we go down here okay so I'm gonna erase this so we can do another example okay um, this property and this property are gonna be especially important when we're solving exponential equations so the first thing says if you have a power so if you have something raised to the s power times something raised to the t power Okay, so notice the bases are the same here. Okay, this is base A, this is base A. We have a power of A times a power of A. Okay, so what happens here? So let me give you an example. Say this is 2 cubed times 2 to the fourth. Okay, so you've got a power of 2 times another power of 2. Okay, if you ever forget the rule, you can write this out. So 2 cubed. Okay, that's going to be this. This is going to be 2 times itself 3 times. And then you're going to multiply that by 2 to the 4th, which is 2 multiplied by itself 4 times. So you end up multiplying 2 by itself 7 times. So this is 2 to the 7th. So the key here is that you have to have the same base. So if you have a to the s power times a to the t power, your base is going to remain a. You're going to add the exponents. 3 plus 4 would give you 7 here. So this is going to be a raised to the s plus t power. Okay. On the flip side, if you have a to the s raised to the t power. Okay. So here you've got a power raised to a power. Okay. So in this situation, as an example, we would have instead 2 cubed, take that quantity and raise it to the fourth power. Okay, so in this situation, if you're taking 2 cubed and you're uh, raising it to the fourth power, that means you're taking 2 cubed and multiplying it by itself four times. Okay, and then each of these guys, each of the 2 cubes, breaks down into 2 times 2 times 2. Okay, so that's this piece. And then you would do it again. You would multiply by another 2 cubed. And then you would multiply by another 2 cubed. Whoops. And then lastly, you would multiply by the last 2 cubed. Okay. So in this situation, you are multiplying 2 by itself 12 times. Okay. So if you have a power raised to a power, you're going to multiply the exponents. Okay. So this is going to be like I said, 2 to the 12th. So if you have a power raised to the power, okay, this is when you're going to multiply the exponents. So a to the s power, uh, that quantity raised to the t power is going to be equal to a raised to the s times t power. If the exponents are side by side, they can touch each other, that's when you're going to multiply the exponents. Okay, last property. Um, what is going on here? You have a times b in parentheses. So you would do that first and then raise that quantity to the s power. So that's equivalent to raising a to the s power and then multiplying by what you get if you take b and raise it to the s power as well. Okay. So if I had 
2 times 3 raised to the fourth power, you would probably do the inside of the parentheses first and make this 6 to the fourth power, but you could also do 2 to the fourth times 3 to the fourth, and you would also get the correct answer, okay? All right, so these are good properties to know if you are solving exponential equations, okay? Um, the last thing I want to talk about with this review of exponential functions is the number e. If you remember when I was making up exponential functions up here, uh, g of t, I used e as a base, okay? So the number e, which you've probably seen before, it's a number a lot like pi. Um, it is a decimal that keeps going forever and it does not repeat. So e is approximately 2.71 828, 1828. It looks like it's repeating here, but it actually does not repeat. Mathematically, um, there is a definition of it that you probably have not seen before. The number e is defined as the number that the expression 1 plus 1 over n, that quantity raised to the n power, it's the number that this expression approaches as your n numbers get bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay, so let me show you this to give you an idea. Okay, on a calculator, I'm going to go to y equals and I'm going to put in this expression. Instead of uh, n, I'm going to use x. So quantity in parentheses, 1 plus 1 over x. Close parentheses, raise that to the x power. Okay, and then I'm going to go to my table function. I'm going to let my x values get bigger and bigger and bigger. And we're going to watch... Uh, what happens to the outputs of this expression, okay? So I'm going to go to my table feature here, okay? And I'm going to plug in bigger and bigger x values, and the y values are going to be the outputs of the expression, okay? So I'll start off small, let's say 10, okay? That's the value of the expression, okay? It's rounded here, okay? Um, and then I'll go to 100, okay? And then I'll go to 1,000, for x and you can see what's happening here and I'll go even bigger I'll go to 10,000 okay and then it's rounding so you kind of can't see we need more decimal places to to see any further what's going on but as our x values get bigger and bigger um, we're approaching this number e okay so mathematically that is how the number e is defined Again, just like pi, we kind of think of the decimal ex expansion. It's approximately 2.71. When you work with E as your base, you need to use the full decimal expansion. So just leave it as E, okay? But in the back of you, your mind, you know it's approximately 2.71, okay? Uh, one other thing I'm going to mention here, just to kind of set you up for calculus. In calculus talk, the way we would write this is the limit as n approaches infinity of this quantity is approximately, well, I'll go ahead and say it equals e, okay? One of the very first things you're gonna study in calculus is limit notation, okay? So here's an example of limit notation, okay? I'm looking at this expression and this piece means that as my n numbers get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, okay, they're approaching positive infinity, this expression tends to the value e. All right, we're going to talk about logarithms now.